Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorials on my YouTube channel, Python for Microscopist. In this tutorial, let's have a quick look at uh, binary classification example. And I'm going to use malarial uh, infected uh, or parasitized and uninfected, uh, you know, images data set. And this is the same data set I used in as an example when I was talking about what binary classification is. And basically binary classification is you have an image and it belongs to either infected or not infected in this example. If this is an image of cat, is it a cat or not a cat? It doesn't matter if it's dog or a donkey or something else, but it's not a cat is the important part. So that's what the binary classification is. If you are trying to classify things as cat and a dog, I don't think that should be called binary classification, even though you have only two things. That falls into multi-class classification because it's cat, it's dog. It's these two. For binary classification, is it infected or is it not infected? Is it cat or is it not cat? Is it obese or not obese? Yeah. So these are the binary, uh, this is what we mean by binary classification. Now, how do we do this? Again, let's jump into the code and uh, the images I'm going to use are, uh, again, you can download it. Uh, I'll provide the link, but uh, these are again, uh, you have parasitized images where you can clearly see something happening in here and uh, you also have uninfected images where you have like basically very clean uh, cells. Okay, and I have uh, two folders, one for uh, training images and one for validation. Okay, so now let's jump into the code and uh, the first few lines, again, this is uh, just our uh, uh, plotting libraries. The next few lines are Keras uh, libraries to define our deep learning model and then uh, the libraries to read our images and uh, uh, numpy okay so uh, my image directory first of all for training is cell images so let's go ahead and uh, uh, define that as my image directory and then I'm going to target my size of the images to 150 by 150 pixels so I'm defining the size here and these two are basically placeholders to store uh, the uh, the data for X and Y, right? X is all the input data and Y is the labels. So X is nothing but my images and labels are the label zero and one that I'm going to assign in a minute. Okay, so let's run these lines of code here. And there you go. And now let's start by reading parasitized images and then uninfected images. Again, there are multiple ways to read these images. You can use image uh, data gen to actually go through and then kind of read these images, resize them. So there are multiple ways since I have already done this a while ago uh, and it works, I'm not gonna change this. Go ahead and change it uh, based on your favorite way of reading images, okay? Now, my parasitized images are coming from my image directory, which is cell images slash parasitized folder. And then uninfected is coming from the uninfected folder, just like I showed you. And once I read those, I'm going to uh, uh, go through my for loop to load each image. Every image is in PNG format. So to load each image and read it using OpenCV. And, uh, uh, and then uh, I'm going to use a pillow library to because it makes it easy for us to resize the images, convert them back to NumPy array. And then uh, all of this uh, with uh, your uh, image generator or data augmentation technique can be just uh, could fall into a single line or two lines of code, but that's OK. Uh, label, I'm going to append a label of zero to parasitized and one to uninfected. It's up to you. You can as assign one to the other, okay? So let's go ahead and run these lines of code after which we should have our data set and label uh, uh, populated. So if I open my data set here, uh, it should show me 500 entries and each entry is 150 by 150 by three size and it's un in, uh, unsigned integer eight data type. Okay, if I open this, you may see all zeros, but these images have black boundaries and inside you have like the cell image, right? So if I open this and look at my axis two, which is, uh, you should see if I scroll down, there you go, you have some numbers over there, okay? So everything seems to be fine so far, I hope for you. And also if you look at our label, it should have 1000 entries up here, okay? 500 for uninfected, 500 for parasitized. And again, zeros and ones. Okay, so now let's go ahead and convert these uh, lists. Again, the label is a list and uh, my data set is also a list. 
okay? And lists don't work very well with uh, uh, math, so let's convert them into NumPy arrays, so that's what these two lines are. Okay, and then let's uh, uh, load, I don't think we need two categorical for this example, so let me comment that out, but let's actually input, uh, 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 load this library, train, test, and split, so we can extract or split our data set into training and testing. Okay, we have done this quite a few times, so I hope you're comfortable with this. And here I'm assigning 20% uh, to my test size and uh, remaining 80% to, uh, to, uh, for, for uh, training. Okay, now uh, we have to scale these values. Again, not have to, it's recommended to scale these uh, because the output uh, you know, converges a bit faster and also you may get much accurate results when you do that. Again, I did a video on this, so I don't wanna dwell a lot on that. So the way, uh, again, I'm doing this uh, scaling here is by using normalize that exists within keras.utilities. So let's normalize this. Remember, you see my X test and X train are both unsigned integer eight, meaning our numbers are going from zero to 255. Now, when I run these lines of code, now it should become float once it's done. There you go, float 64, meaning my values in here, uh, if I open, uh, apparently I cannot open because I am also changing the shape of this, but uh, the values go from zero to one. Uh, because we are normalizing them. That's it. Okay, so all set to define our model, and this is the important part, right? For binary classification, the output layer shall have only one output. Okay, so here it is. Again, don't think of this as binary, so you have two outputs, okay? Binary classification, one output with a probability value. If the probability, let's say if the value is 0 0.9, which is close to one, what is our one? What is our one here? uninfected, so it's uninfected. If the value is close to zero, it is infected, okay? So that's what our output looks like. It's only one, and again, use sigmoid. Do not use softmax. Softmax is for multi-class problems. For, uh, uh, for, for our binary classification, sigmoid is a great one for output uh, activation, uh, activation for the output layer, okay? So this is one key point. Uh, and the other key point is we are dealing with images, so add at least a couple of convolutional layers. In this case, I'm adding three convolutional layers. Another important uh, point, if you want uh, to get, uh, you know, uh, even uh, more stable results, then add norm batch normalization. I did not do that here, but you can add batch normalization for every convolutional layer. So, uh, so the inputs that are going into the convolutional layer, into the next layer, are normalized and, uh, 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 you know, uh, which really helps with uh, training. Okay, so this is what, uh, and again, this is how I defined this architecture, and you can define any how you want. Uh, and finally, coming down, model.compile, the last function that uh, you're trying to minimize in this case, using your optimizer is binary cross entropy. For multi-class, it was, uh, uh, I, I completely blanked out. It was cross entropy, uh, uh, but it wasn't binary cross entropy. I'm so sorry, it's uh, way too late in the afternoon and uh, my uh, brain started to blank out. But anyway, uh, so that's uh, 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 also cross entropy, but not binary cross entropy, but there, uh, which is binary cross entropy is a special case of overall cross entropy type of uh, approach, okay? And the optimizer we are using is RMS uh, prop, but you can also try using Adam, okay? Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and this one actually works very well with binary cross entropy and uh, with categorical cross entropy, I, uh, there you go, it came out without even thinking. Sorry, the other one I was thinking about was categorical cross entropy. Sorry about that. But uh, Adam and categorical cross entropy, again, you try these combinations to see how it works out on your data and you gain knowledge on your own data sets. And the metric I'm trying to uh, track is uh, uh, accuracy, so we can plot this. And here is model.summary. And uh, after all of this, what are we doing? We are fitting the model with our training data X and training data Y and a batch size of 64. I can handle 64 on my GPU right now, 4 GB GPU, not fancy, but still better than not having a GPU. And uh, let's do 300 epochs. I think this should be relatively fast. I'll pause the video, but let's do 300 epochs because we'll really see a good training uh, for that many epochs. And I'm gonna save the model so we can actually continue this uh, uh, 
you know, looking at, uh, looking at uh, you know, uh, plots and all that stuff. So let's actually run up to this point. Let me go ahead and run this entire thing up to that point. And uh, let's keep an eye here and I'll pause the video so we can continue after the 300. So you can see how fast it's actually going. So I, I give it four to five minutes. Okay, let me pause the video. Okay, so there you go. After 300 epochs, uh, looks like the validation accuracy on the last epoch was about 84%, but let's go ahead and plot this to see uh, how these uh, look like. And again, this is the same type of plots I've been using in all the other videos, so I'm not gonna explain that. So let's run this to see, or uh, they don't look great. I mean, uh, the training loss and validation loss, I mean, they they're obviously going up in general but then you see these spikes it would be an interesting uh it would be interesting to see how batch normalization is affecting these type of wild behavior i have a good feeling that it's going to stabilize this entire thing okay so go ahead and try that now uh let's go ahead and test this on uh, one of the images okay and uh so let's actually select the second image here uh, let's go ahead and have a quick look at it, okay? So which image we are talking about. So, uh, well, this, I kind of see, you see this area, again, I, I hate to replot it right now, but you can see uh, this region uh, right in here. So to me, it looks like this is infected or parasitized, but uh, let's go ahead and print the uh, output. So obviously we have to expand the dimensions, uh, otherwise the input only has uh, uh, the three dimensions in the uh, tuple. And now let's go ahead and uh, predict this. So let's print out both the original and also the predicted. So uh, the prediction for this image apparently is uh, 10 to the minus 26, which is practically zero, and the actual label is zero. Great. So let's actually predict image number 23 is parasitized. So let's go ahead and look at this image number 23, for example, parasitized. And uh, yeah, you can see these blobs clearly and uh, zero. And then we are getting 10 to the minus 23, zero. Great. Uh, and uh, image number 24, let's actually go to 24. I did this once, so I don't waste your time. Image number 24 again. So this is giving me a value of 0 0.995, very close to one. So it's saying this is uninfected. That's also great. Uh, apparently 26 is incorrect. So I'm curious in terms of what it is. Okay, so let's go to look at 26. So uh, it seems to be correct. So looks like the last time I did the training, so the way it converged, it was giving me uh, wrong values, but right now it's giving me zero, so I'm happy with that, okay? Now, how many of these images can you look at? That's why we have these metrics. So uh, let's actually look at the overall accuracy by looking at model.evaluate. We are evaluating the model on the test data set, X test and Y test. So let's do that on all of our 200 uh, test data sets and the accuracy we're getting is about 84%. That is great. But the accuracy here is about the overall accuracy. I don't have a good idea about how good is it doing on one set versus the other. Is it actually getting all parasitized correct, but then it's getting like bulk of my uh, uninfected wrong or the other way around? because there are huge implications, right? Is this a cancer cell or a healthy cell? If it's actually uh, getting uh, you know, all healthy cells, let's say uh, correct, but then when it comes to actual cancer cells, if it's actually getting only 50% correct as cancer and the other 50% as healthy, the overall accuracy may look like, oh, 80% accuracy, but then it's not accurate on these cancer cells, right? So for that, we have something called confusion matrix and we have other parameters like ROC, I do not want to extend this video, so I'll stop this here, and in the next tutorial, I'm gonna actually talk about confusion matrix and ROC to see how it can help us evaluate the results and uh, the thresholds and so on. So I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. Again, as usual, I request you to please go ahead and subscribe to this uh, channel, and let's meet in the next tutorial to discuss the metrics. So thank you very much.